Hello everyone, this is Morgan here from Forex Varsity, and today I'll be doing the mentorship video for all of our students today. What I'm going to be looking at is something I actually did during an advanced mentorship program, and I feel that it's going to be very important to teach most of our students about this. So to the students who didn't come to the classes on Thursday evening, I urge you to come through because it does help you a huge amount to learn all the aspects of trading that are going to help you expand on all of your knowledge and in turn make you a better trader. But my focus today is going to be to try and teach you the forecasting strategy that I use for my trading. So what we're going to focus on doing today is having a look at where we can find a Fibonacci retracement and then we're going to see if the forecasting is going to work. So right now during the Brexit week that we've just completed on, the markets are very difficult to predict. So what I'm going to do is go back into past history and try and find a Fibonacci retracement. I'm on the 15 minute chart because it's just going to make it a lot easier to see the turnarounds, the retracements, as well as the candlestick information which I tend to find shows a lot better on a 15 minute chart, whereas one hour charts do show the same. It's just a lot easier to have a look on a 15 minute. So what I'm doing is just having a look if we can find any fib retracements that have completed really nicely. Let's see if this is one. No, it broke the retracement. Let's get rid of this. Okay. I'm going to have a look for a bearish retracement. Um, that could be a lovely one to have a look at. I want to have a look at a bearish retracement first because that's the easier one to look through. Let's see if this is... Okay, this looks great. Okay, so what we have here is a 50 fib retracement on a really great piece of candlestick information you see right here. So what I've done is drawn the fib right from the top at this point all the way down to the bottom here and then as you see indicated the 50 fib has been just pierced and then this candle has shown a great retracement turnaround and the bearish engulfing candle takes that tweezer top right out. So this is a great piece of candlestick information that I would have probably entered on this bearish candle as it passed below the body of that bullish candle that retraced. So what I'd focus on doing now is Say, for example, we find this FID now, and now we want to enter. The thing is that we don't know any of this information to the right-hand side of where the 50 FIB retracement occurred. So what our focus is to try and predict what's going to happen and forecast the trade. The issue is when you are forecasting a trade and also moving your stop losses accordingly, it can become very, very stressful to try and know are you in the good are you in the bad and that's where EMAs come into its exponential moving averages is to see whether you're above the trend or below the trend now this is actually a manual way to try and predict the trend because sometimes an EMA only shows up after the candlestick information appears on the chart so it's very important that you can forecast much further into the future say for example say for example 10 to 15 to maybe even 30 candlesticks into the future. So what you do is draw a rectangle. Now on your uh, instruments cluster here, if you can't find the rectangle, just right click here, go customize, and then right over here if you will have a look in the available um, chart area, you just click say for example on the rectangle and just say insert and it will then insert into your selected uh, instruments to use. So what you do is select one and you draw a rectangle from the top of the 50 fib 
So exactly where the retracement occurred. So not where you entered, but where the retracement occurred. And you draw it straight down to where the beginning of that, the end of that fib was drawn. So right down to the 0% area you see right over here. What you're going to do is draw it down to that area and then make it square. So it doesn't have to be perfectly square, but let's say that's square. Now, the big thing is if you zoom out, it squishes the square into a rectangle. So what you have to do is zoom in to an area where you are able to see the entire area of the fib plus close to two times that space. So basically you want the length of the fib plus an additional length of the fib on your chart. So that's what we have here more or less. So if I zoom out too much, then the length of the fib is way too long. And if I zoom in, it's way too short. So this is the perfect area. What you would do is now that you wouldn't see any of this candlestick information following here. So what you need to do is take this rec what you need to do is take this square, double click on it, and drag it right over to exactly where that candlestick formed and let go. So make sure it's deselected. Now what you're going to do is, once again, because you can't see any of this candlestick information forming, you would take a trend line and draw from that top retracement point on that 50 fib right down to the bottom of that rectangle. And what this gives you is a 45 degree angle. And what the 45 degree angle does is it enables you to see whether the trade is in the positive or the negative zone. So this is a bearish trend. So the positive zone is if it's below the 45 degree and the negative zone is if it is above the 45 degree. So say for example you enter on the first bearish engulfing candle which would be this candle. What you would do is set your stop loss. So say for example this orange red line here is our stop loss. So say for example you enter and you set your stop loss right above this area which is a perfect area. What this trade does is, what this indicator does is it helps you move your average along with the movement of the trade. So say for example you entered in on that bearish engulfing, what you would do is set your stop loss and then take a vertical line from your instruments and draw the vertical line on the candlestick that you entered, okay? And now this is where it's going to come to personal preference. This vertical line is going to allow you to track your track and move your stop loss as you need it. So say for example you prefer having a three candlestick lag or a five candlestick lag, this is exactly where you're going to set your stop loss. So say for example you want a three candlestick lag on after the point that you entered. So now you set your stop loss right on where the crossover of this point is that you see right here of the 45 degrees. So the crossover of the 45 degree, the vertical and the horizontal stop loss is exactly where you're setting your stop loss. Now, say for example, you want a four candlestick lag, okay? What you're going to do is wait until the next four candlesticks form. So now we've got one, two, three, four. On the fourth candlestick, what you're going to do is move your stop loss to that point Okay. So So now every single next candlestick that forms, you will see you will need to move your stop loss. So what you do is say for example the fifth candlestick forms, you'd move to this candlestick and you take your stop loss and you'd shift it down that line, okay? So say for example, you keep on doing this and this trade keeps on moving and you've got a four candlestick lag. So say for example, you set down to this candlestick, okay? And it's a four candlestick lag. So now we've got one, two, three, four candlesticks. So now you've set it and it's kept on moving and you set your stop loss right here. 
Okay. What have, has happened here is it's broken into the negative area that you see. So now this bullish candle has broken straight through the 45 degree now into the negative area. So the next candlestick is what is going to be the decision maker to help you either close your trade or hold. So what we see here is another tweezer top or a hammer forming. And that is a great indicator to show that the trend is probably going to reverse and not continue. So what I'd do is move the stop down there to the four, fourth candlestick lag and I'd hold it and I'd see what, made, what might form up. So if you have a look here, the next candle that forms is a bearish candle and it engulfs the previous candlestick, which is great. So it's a bearish engulfing. So now what you do is go straight back to setting a four candlestick lag, which should be a one, two, three, four. You'd set on the fourth candlestick and set it right there as that bearish candle would have closed below that area. And then you would have kept on moving it. Say for example, now you get to this line and now the 45 degree angle has stopped and the trade has kept on moving below that. What you would do is double click on the square and you'd hold your control button and pull a new square straight down. So it's an exact copy. You will then set the 45 degree angle back to where it used to be and just extend in that area. So now you have the 45 degree angle extended even further. And now once again, we are still on the four candlestick leg. So say for example, we're sitting on the fourth candlestick leg here. We've moved our stop loss down now and it still has not been hit. So we keep on moving it and keep on moving it. And say for example, we get to this area right over here where it's now pierced that 45 again. So say for example, we're on a four candlestick leg. So that's one, two, three, four. You'd set your stop loss, it broke, had a complete reversal and kept on going down. So now let's say you set another stop loss much further down that 45 and it pierces that area. So now you have one, two, three, four. This little wick right here would have cut your trade and would have closed it. And now you see the move has turned. So now it's actually a complete retracement. And two indicators of that would have been the candlestick information you'd see here of a very small candle followed by a very large bearish candle and then followed by two large bullish engulfing candles. So it would have been very important to have moved your stop loss on a four candle lag all the way down here and that forecast, if you entered in the center of the bearish engulfing down to the bottom here would have been 98 pips. So what the strategy does is it ensures that when it is, for example, on a bearish trend below this 45, it's in a positive area. So you don't need to stress. All you need to do is move your stop loss down on say a four candlestick lag, a six candlestick lag, however you prefer. If you want the stops to be very tight, you can do a one candlestick lag. It just depends on what you prefer. Then the big focus is if it crosses that line into the negative area. That's very important where you're going to focus on sort of getting to work and focusing on where you're going to set that stop loss, making sure you keep it on whatever candlestick lag that you said you were going to use. So from the beginning of the trade, if you wanted a four candlestick lag, you must make sure that you keep a four candlestick lag right towards the end of the trade, even, across, even if it crosses into the negative zone. So it's very important that you use the same candlestick lag. So it's a very simple strategy. It's very easy to use. And it's taken me some time to focus on trying to find the best forecasting strategy and I've been using this for a few months now and it's worked amazingly for me. It, maxes my, it, maxes, it maximizes my profits 
and it cuts my stop losses in the best possible area I could have. So I hope you guys enjoy using this on your strategy. If any of you do need more assistance, you can just jump onto the online chat room that we have on our website and you can come and ask me some questions. You can also give us a call in our offices and you can just ask for Morgan and I'll make sure to help you out. Our team of traders are here to help you with any queries that you have. So just ask away and we'll make sure to assist you. Once again, thanks so much for tuning into this video and I'll see you in the next one.